What's unique about St. Paul's Catholic School, one, is it, it's a school where faith is at the heart of it. Now, I'm, I'm hoping that's part of all Catholic schools, but here in Canyon County, we're the only school where Catholicism is in the middle and imbues everything we do with the school. St. Paul's has been here for now going on 94 years. The class sizes are small, averaging 12 to 15 students per grade level. So we help every child reach their potential, not only physically, not only academically, but emotionally and, and, uh, and spiritually as well. Education is always future oriented, that we are raising up the next generation of leadership. And as St. Paul's Catholic Church, we are starting with little children all the way up through middle school, giving them the tools to one, be a part, a player in the future, in whatever field they choose. But then with that, right next to them is gonna be their faith in Jesus Christ. That's gonna have a huge impact on the world. Father Caleb Vogel is actively involved in the school all the time. But more than that, he's interactive with the students. He sees them on a day-to-day -day basis. The priest represents the church in a way that other people don't, and that's not to put anybody down. But when a priest comes to class and teaches and sings with the children and is playing on the playground, the children get to see an experience of the church that they don't ordinarily get to see. They get to see that the church is filled with normal human beings. Like as a priest, I'm a normal human being, they get to see that. But also they get to see that, wow, this man chose to dedicate his life to the church in a profound way. Maybe I could do that too. I think for a parish to have a school, a parish is choosing really a mission field to help support uh, the future of Catholicism in a powerful way. And I think the vitality the school brings to the parish with families coming in every year, it keeps it vital because of the, the kids are always changing, new people are always coming in, and uh, life is seen. I think parents would look to send their children to St. Paul's Catholic School because this is a place where they can entrust their children to us to receive a good education and to be instilled with good faith and morals. We live in a world that's very diverse and very confusing, and we're here to help the parents to, Im to impart a Christian worldview to these children. And I think that's really important. I'd want that for my children if I had them, and that's what we can offer parents. that we come together as a school community and celebrate Mass together. Often we'll find him in classrooms. He loves being a part of the school community.
Easy to say, easy to record. Okay. It's a good thing actually, you can you can edit. That's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> um, it's uh, I can edit to say exactly what I want. Keep that in mind. That's for blackmail later. Okay. Just kidding. Um, so I'll just have you don't worry about the camera. Just talk with me. Okay. Um, I'll just introduce yourself and what your role is here at St. Paul's. Okay. Well, my name is Scott Coulter, and I serve as principal at St. Paul's Catholic School in Nampa, Idaho. Tell us a little bit about St. Paul's, uh, about the school. Talk, can you talk about class sizes? Or what makes St. Paul's unique? Uh, they get a lot of first hand one-on-one -on -one experiences with their teachers. Um, what, why would a parent want to send um, their child to St. Paul's? I'm going to borrow a phrase from Matthew Kelly, and that is that it's really important. That's a good answer. Um, can you talk to the importance of having a priest? The importance, I guess, of not just having the priest near the school, you know, but have also having it being a part of a parish community. Okay. Well, our pastor, Father uh, he can bring a knowledge and an expertise in the study of religion, but also just as a model for the church itself. He represents the church wherever he goes, and uh, he's a true ambassador of the Catholic Church. How long have you been mm. in school, I guess, okay. involved in Catholic schools? I've been in Catholic schools. I've been a professional educator for nearly 40 years, 24, 25 of that in Catholic education. Uh, I served as an administrator in, in secondary ed. This is my first experience in a K-8 school, uh, but I have a vast experience that spans since the 1980s in Catholic education, both in Oregon and in Idaho. What made you want to go into education? Uh, the opportunity to work with young men and women uh, as a teacher and a coach, and then the opportunity to, to lead and provide leadership and direction for professional educators as well as to help children. Um, as an administrator. So I just really like working with young people. What do you coach? I coached football, basketball, baseball, golf. Um, I've coached it all. Soccer? Uh, never soccer. Come on. I coached wrestling one year. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you gotta coach soccer. This is a soccer community. I head track and field coach one year. I've, uh, You've done a lot there. I have. I have a vast experience. That's cool. Um, did you want to be a I kind of knew. Oh, sorry, let me turn this off real quick. I forgot this was on. Hey. Okay, Rochelle. Oh, is that your guard dog? Yay. My guard dog. Hey, be careful. Yeah. Don't bite him. I'm going to put Ellen the leash first so I can keep my purse. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm quick. So yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. All right, we'll see you tomorrow if you're out to work. Okay. I figured. All right, what was that question again? Did I always know I wanted oh, to be yeah. an educator? So you always know you wanted to be a teacher. Only uh, probably in the uh, high school years, mm -hmm. being around athletics, a teacher and a coach. Uh, that's when I thought, yeah, I think I'd like to teach and coach someday. I didn't think about administration uh, early on, but uh, that came later. What did, you, what did you, as a child, what did you think you wanted to do? Like, what was your childhood dream of being a teacher? 
of adulthood? Uh, I thought I wanted to be an engineer like my dad. Uh, he was a great man. Um, and I thought to be a great man, I needed to be an engineer. And what I found out, uh, it really in my faith journey, is that to be a good man, you don't have to be something to be like someone else. You can be a good person and not follow their same career path. And, uh, and that's what I chose to do. That's a good one. What kind of engineer? Uh, civil engineer. Yeah. My dad's a civil engineer as well. Yeah. He just retired from the Forest Service. Yeah, almost, I think, wow. a little over, or nearly, I think it was nearly 50 years. Yeah. Just gone. And uh, so, same thing, though. Great man. Um, well, I, I knew pretty early on that I wasn't going to be an engineer. But he he pulls me aside one day, because I'm a musician as well. He pulls me aside and goes, you know, it's really not that different. And I went, no, Dad, you're night and day different. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 no. Music, it's all about math. I'm like, you just ruined it for me. <laughs> I had nothing to do with math. Yeah. I did this so I didn't See, have to. And I taught mathematics. Oh. And so, yeah. But I don't consider myself musical at all. Although I, you know, I like music. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there is math. I totally get that there's math to it. But the way my head processes all of it, it doesn't process it as right. math, it processes it as something else. Yep. It's a language, though. It is. It is. That's true. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you would like to say? Um, is there anything you would like people to know? I might run through those questions again just so we have Kay. an answer without the... I don't know if that's going to be picked up. Or okay. Is there anything you want to tell um, someone looking at St. Paul's Catholic School that they should know that they wouldn't know necessarily by looking at it um, I guess, does that make sense? Kind of like, yeah. if someone's looking at the school, like, we've kind of touched on there's a priest, there's this, there's that, but ultimately, why should someone, why would they consider this? It's a bargain. And I say that because of the value of Catholic education. If you look across the, the country, um, nationally, 90% of all students who graduate from a Catholic high school graduate from a university in four years. Now, if you look at, at uh, the cost of a university, state university average $17,000 a year, private institutions 42000 Now, the graduation rate from public high schools across the country is less than 40% graduate with a four-year degree in four years. Um, and if you can invest early on in a quality education, K-8, 9-12, you're ensuring success uh, for the future. And all I, I think that not only academically, but also morally and ethically, students who come out of Catholic schools are ready for the future. That's a good answer. Um, okay, so I'll just have you, we'll go through that one more time. Everything was yep. great, honestly it was. I just want to make sure that we don't have that in the background. Uh, um, sure. So we'll go have you just in reintroduce yourself and then your role here at St. Paul's. Okay. Uh, my name is Scott Coulter and I serve as principal at St. St. Paul's Catholic School here in Nampa, Idaho. I have to remember what the other questions were now. Um, what makes St. Paul's Catholic School unique? I think at St. Paul's we help people become, in Matthew Kelly's words, the best version of themselves. We aspire to that every day, whether that's academically, spiritually, physically. We help each student reach their potential. And we do that because we have small class ratios, 10 to 12 students per grade level, maybe as high as 15 or 16. Um, our students get lots of one-on-one -on -one attention from their teachers. Our teachers are able to bring out the very best in their students. Okay. I think that was it. Okay. Well, thank you for your good time. Go.